Some well, let, let's get to the, the politics of it and the part and the partisan nature of it, because you'd think, I mean, given the fact that, that given the fact that the founding fathers, <coughs> I mean, you said, I mean, the, the country was founded on a proposition. Yep. It was founded <coughs> on values, the city on a hill, all these kinds of values everyone's talking about around the country today. And one would think, therefore, that patriotism is a virtue. It's a bipartisan virtue, or it can be a virtue, not just a, an emotion. <coughs> But I, I'd ask you, Jack, I mean, it seems to me, I'd go beyond what, what Michael just said. It seems to me from these, the polls we've seen and the public debate today that the Republicans have won this debate, at least in recent years. And I, I think it seems to me that, 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 you know, that, the, that the left ha has almost abandoned the concept of patriotism to the right. Maybe I'm overstating it. <coughs> and that many on the left seem uncomfortable no with a concept of patriotism, almost embarrassed by it. Well, let me jump in then. Yeah, please. Because I'm uncomfortable thinking that the Republicans have captured the idea of patriotism. Because I don't believe it. I don't think it's good for the country. Uh, I think Barack is just as patriotic as John. And um, I got to tell everybody, this is my favorite day in the whole year. I mean, if you're a camp, July 4th is the greatest day <laughs> in the history of civilization other than the birth of our Lord and Savior. <laughs> Having said that, you know, I cry at the Pledge of Allegiance, the reading of the Declaration of Independence, the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. I mean, I cry at supermarket openings. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it is a feeling, as the professor pointed out. And Michael, you were so correct in uh, reminding us that, you know, Reagan, right or wrong, used to have that wonderful statement, you can move to France, you're not French, you can move to Germany, you're not German, Japan, you're not Japanese. The day you come to America, you're an American, if you get it right, of course, and what was right is <laughs> believing in the, in the Declaration. That, that, that's why Lincoln went back four score and seven. Um, I do something with my family I'd like to share very quickly. I love the idea of perspective. Um, I brought along my favorite book. I've been um, giving this to my children and my grandchildren. It's uh, Frederick Douglass and the 4th of July. Frederick Douglass, the great abolitionist and a friend of Lincoln, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, was invited by the Women's Anti-Slavery Association, whatever, society, to speak in Rochester, New York, July the 5th, 1852. And he gave a speech in which he identified himself with the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution as being fundamentally the antithesis of slavery. If you Americans really believe in the Declaration of Independence, it is antithetical to your premise, your predicate, your foundation block to believe in slavery. And then he went on to say, why did you invite me here? Did you invite me here to mock me? Did you invite me on this July the 5th to celebrate the 4th? He wouldn't speak on the 4th because African Americans would not speak on the 4th. They didn't celebrate the 4th in the 19th century. They spoke about the 4th on the 5th. And he told 4,000 women, I'm sure there were some men there, that um, it was the declaration that they were uh, of independence and this was not his day, this is your day, all you white folk out there in the audience. He got a standing ovation from 25, 3,500 people because he had the audacity and the courage, in my opinion, and the patriotism to love this country so much that he criticized it in an open forum after, of course, he laid down the same predicate that David did in that comment about Abraham Lincoln starting the Gettysburg Address with four score and seven. America was founded on an idea. You could go further and say an ideal. So it's not Republican or Democrat, and it is historical to think patriotism, and it is also historical to see presidential elections whipsawing each other apart. Jefferson and Adams in 1800. Read about the campaign of 1800. It was nasty, rotten and they pilloried each other. Lincoln in 1860 was called a guerrilla. A newspaper in Mil Milwaukee, Wisconsin editorialized that Abraham Lincoln, the abolitionist, or at least 
accused of being an abolitionist. He wasn't until after the Civil War, uh, after, uh, after Gettysburg. He was, uh, the editorial was, um, someone should stick a dagger in the heart of this gorilla. They called him a gorilla, an ape. Um, Truman, my, I grew up in LA. My mama and papa talked about Harry Truman as nothing but a failed haberdasher. I grew up, got married, my wife of 50 years is over there. Um, we celebrate Harry Truman as a great contributor to the defense of the West. And uh, of course, thanks to David McCullough, and I'm sure you too, David, uh, Truman turns out to be one of the great presidents of the 20th century. So um, I, I don't want to take this too long, except to say, finally, I like to go back to 232 years, because 232 years ago, there were no democracies. Not a one. Today, there's 135, 45. I don't know what the count is. About that. They're not Jeffersonian, but there is a movement, albeit haltingly. I don't think it can come at the end of a barrel of a gun, but I do believe that freedom is on the march, and it is historically on the right side of history. Having said that, there was a Holy Roman Emperor, Venice was a republic, France was ruled by a king, China by an emperor, Russia by an empress, Great Britain was a monarchy, Japan was ruled by a shogun, and of all of those systems that have passed into the, into the history books, there's really only one that has survived as a constitutional, federated, Republican, Democrat, liberal democracy, our country. With all its faults, we've been through world wars, civil war, rascality, in and out of government, depressions, inflation, and we're, we're still the greatest country on this earth. And I don't say that as a chauvinist, I say it, I think we need to mend every flaw in our nation, one of which is racism, and that's why I celebrated uh, Barack Obama's speech in 2004 as calling for racial reconciliation. I think that is a great issue because when I started in professional football, there was not a single black quarterback, not a single black coach, not a, and we've come a long way. We've got a long way to go, and I think the next step of integration is the economy, and helping make it work for all people is going to be the next great test of this great liberal democracy we call the United States of America, particularly on July 4th. Thank you. <laughs> Dave, David, you uh, Jack, I, I can't resist, uh, as an historian, saying that there are worse fates than ending up in the history books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but look, more seriously. Just so we don't. <laughs> the, uh, the, you said Frederick uh, Douglass loved his country. Uh, I, I'd demur a little bit. Uh, okay. He did not love the country that was in the 1850s, a country that still embraced and protected and defended slavery under the Constitution. Absolutely. He, he loved the country that was imminent, the country that was yeah. potentially there, that it could be if it lived up to its own, That's as Lincoln it. said, the better angel. I don't contest nation. that, David. But, there's, but, but I just, I, I mentioned that, I, I, I know you understand that. Just by way of illustrating or, or suggesting another point, I'd go back to another famous American, Stephen Decatur who returned to the naval base at Norfolk, Virginia in 1816 after having just chastised the day of Algiers and the famous Barbary pirates. And there was a dinner in his honor. And he arose and offered a toast, which has passed into our folklore. Uh, he said, our country, may she always be in the right, but our country right or wrong. Now that's not Frederick Douglass's definition no, of patriotism. Not. That's a very uncritical idea of patriotism that I think most of us in this room probably would find inadequate. But it's still, it's there. It's part of our tradition, for better or worse. 